Hi, everyone. Lunari and Jean from the future here. I watched this episode twice in a row because once through was not enough to properly absorb everything. And even after my second watch through, I, I'm still unclear on a few things, but please remember that I am anime only. I'm trying to get to know this world and the characters and the abilities. And yeah, there's a lot of fight scenes, but it doesn't mean I'm automatically going to understand exactly how everything works on my first watch through when I haven't read the manga. And I don't know what character is stronger than another. I don't know what technique is stronger than another. And I'm, I'm just still trying to understand this world, but I am trying. So please be patient with me. It feels like I'm in the East Blue of Jujutsu Kaisen. So please don't expect me to understand everything that a manga reader who's up to date would understand. Um, but I am enjoying this story and I'm interested in learning more about how this world works. I'm going to start the episode after a countdown. Three, two, one, play. I like that transition to Sukuna. Twenty three oh five Dao Gensaya. I think this is Fushiguro. I like how everything looks like gray. Is this, that pose, was that what he was going to do against Sukuna at the very beginning of the show? And then Itadori took his, took over his own body again. Furube, Yura Yura.
Does Fushiguro think that he's not going to survive this? Oh. So that's how it happened. <laughs> Mate. The eyes seem similar to Hanami. Oh. Erase the tiny miracles in daily life from memory and store them. Yeah, I did notice earlier that the pink parts were less than before. He does not know this? Was that was a? I think that was a healing thing because it was the same color as in the movie when what's his name was healing Maki Yuta when Yuta was healing Maki. He <laughs> got popcorn and a drink. Do I really need to say it out loud that the animation is amazing? Like, everybody knows that. I'm just here enjoying the show. So one of its legs has been cut off, but I don't know if it can regenerate. Oh, it put itself back together?
I'm going to watch the episode again right after because there's a lot of information and I want to try and understand everything. Oh, those are people. No, all these people. I know I'm not saying much, but I'm just trying to watch. Ah, dirt in my eye. What's that? Oh, an airplane? Wow, the underwater. Electricity, okay. It, okay, it healed. Something with the wheel on its Yamato no Orochi. So, multiple heads? Cycle in harmony. Uh, 
adapt. Oh. Yeah, way back, right before, well, when Sukuna took out Itadori's heart, I think. Malevolent Shrine. Two hundred meters. Did he destroy everything within one hundred and forty meters? That looked like a bird. Oh, he's doing that arrow thing again. I like this soundtrack in the background. Is that Yuji? Okay, that's Sukuna. Oh. Did he drop off Fushiguro?
Is Yuji going to feel like all these people died because of him? Oh, he has memories of it. I didn't know he would he would remember that. Hmm. The 109 is still there. And where's the blood guy? Where did he go? This shot zooming in and spinning is similar to before when they were showing the veil. Wow, those lines. Nothing but a murderer. Oh, it's not over. Nanami's alive. Okay. Not looking so good, though. Wow. I'm about to rewatch the episode, but I just wanted to say a few things before. I am anime only for Jujutsu Kaisen, so I don't know everything that manga readers know about the story and the characters. There are a lot of characters. I don't know all their abilities. And even if a new character does one ability on screen, I'm not going to assume that I know everything about them. They could be holding back. They could have 10 other abilities and I don't know how their relationships with other characters on screen. I'm just trying to absorb everything I can about this world and I'm trying. <laughs> so please be patient with me. It's it's like imagine if this was one piece. You can't expect someone who's only in East Blue to understand what's going on in the recent arcs, right? Like all the power systems and what makes one character stronger than another and all the factions. So I feel like I'm in the East Blue of Jujutsu Kaisen. So I know it's season two, but I, there's still so much that I don't know about how this world works and how the powers work. So please be patient with me. I am trying to get to know this world and the characters. Okay, I'm going to watch the episode again from the beginning. So I like that beginning scene reminding us how Yuji started this whole story, like, you're strong and go help others. And then at the end of the episode, Yuji sees all the destruction that Sukuna did with his body. Now I'm watching the scene when uh, Fushiguro is explaining his 10 shadow technique right before he summons the creature. Two divine dogs are first. See, stuff like this, but Fushiguro has been stabbed and... I know he's a main character, so I'm not really worried about him. But it's stuff like this that it I don't really feel I don't really feel it because I have a feeling he's gonna be healed and because he's the main character. So that's what I mean about a story like Jujutsu Kaisen with so much healing or regeneration. Stuff like this doesn't really hit me. <laughs> of course I'm worried about him, but I just I, I think he'll be fine. This is fine. 
At 1 minute 42 seconds in my first watch through, I did notice that he didn't have the pink lines there. At, at the time, I didn't know what that meant, but I, I did notice it. So this pose that he does, it's like left arm above, right arm under. This, I think he did that way back in the first season when Sukuna took over Yuji and Sukuna took out his heart and right before Yuji took over his own body again. I think Fushiguro did this pose and then Sukuna noticed that. So I think back then Fushiguro was prepared to do this. And I think he would have done that if Itadori hadn't taken his body back. If I'm remembering that correctly. Okay, so not a single person has ever tamed this one before. Now I'm re-watching the scene where Gojo and Megumi are talking. Fushiguro. Do you know why the Gojo family and the Zeni family don't get along? The leaders of both sides had a duel in a head-to-head -head contest. Both died in the end. He had six eyes and limitless curse technique user. Ten shadows technique. I still can't become a sorcerer who can defeat you. The leader at that time must have used it like this too. Okay, so I think Gojo is saying that the leader of Seni and the leader of the Gojo family had a duel and then the, the Zenin head used the technique that Fushiguro uses in this episode and it ended up killing him. Furube yura yura. So Sukuna tells Urame to not neglect preparation. Preparation for what? So I hear the dogs howling. And the way the frogs look, they kind of look like calligraphy style. We see, I think it's Mahoraga with the strings. At first I thought it was like it was being puppeted by Fushiguro, but maybe it was being restrained. I've been tricked. It's a ritual. He started a ritual and forced me to take part. Eight-handled sword, divergent sila divine general. It sounds like he's saying makura, but the subtitle says mahoraga. Okay, I'm just gonna go with what the subtitles say, mahoraga. Okay, so I think the strings were restraints. And then we hear flashback uh, or past Fushiguro saying, see you later to Yuji. And then he apologizes to Yuji. I'm going to die first, so good luck. He summons him, and then Mahoraga tosses him aside. Like, how is, how is Fushiguro not a splat on the wall after being hit like that? <laughs> Mate! <laughs> okay, so I'm paused at 4 minutes 45 seconds. I'm just looking at Mahoraga. Uh, I said earlier that the design reminds me of Hinami because of the eye thing. This is a shikigami, right? A summon. So it's completely different from the curse Hanami, right? But they do look similar. Is it, is it just me? I, I think they look similar. It's like the teeth, the body, the how something is from the eyes. <laughs> he's so short next to Mahoraga, the ponytail guy. And then he's got the, the wheel thing hovering above. It looked like he got squished. And then they explain... Ponytail guy, Haruta, Haruta Shigemo's technique is to erase the tiny miracles in daily life from memory. Is to erase the tiny miracles of daily life from memory. I, is it like rewinding time a little bit so he can avoid? Okay, so right now they're doing flashbacks of Haruta's fight with Nanami and we see the pink lines disappearing. It's like it's like he has limited pink lines and then they keep getting used. The first punch from Nanamin, the second punch from Nanamin, and then that's two lines gone. And store them. The stored miracles will manifest as patterns around his eyes. A third punch? Okay, now it's empty. He doesn't have any. And be released in a critical situation. But he does not know this. Who is he? Is he Sukuna or is he meaning Haruta? Does Haruta not even know his own technique? I know that sounds crazy, but I don't know this. I'm still learning this show. Any, anything is possible. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Honnin. Honnin, I think, means the person themselves. So I think, and then the, the camera pans to 
Haruta. Haruta doesn't know how his technique works. I'm rewinding the scene again because I don't want to misunderstand something. Okay, I'm back at 4 minutes 55 seconds. 3, 2, 1, play. The technique of curse user Haruta Shigemo is to erase the tiny miracles in daily life from memory and store them. The stored miracles will manifest as patterns around his eyes and be released in a critical situation, but he does not know this. Okay, for now, I'm guessing that the narrator is saying that Haruta does not understand his own technique. I could be wrong. Let me be wrong. The show will explain everything eventually. So Sukuna saved him, suspended animation. It seems I did right by saving this trash. Does he rewind time and avoid these critical hits? Or does it just cancel out these critical hits on his body? I don't know. I'm still learning. I'm, I'm processing out loud. I don't know how his technique works. <laughs> In order to save Megumi Fushiguro's life, the Shikigami must be taken down by me. Okay, Sukuna so was saying that he's, it's a good thing that he saved Haruta because if Haruta had died in that moment by being squished, then Fushiguro would have died because they're in this ritual together. Once he dies, the ritual will end and Megumi Fushiguro will also die. You can't die. Okay, so at 5 minutes 50 seconds, Sukuna's doing this like clear healing thing. I think that's the same as when Yuta was healing Maki in the movie. Same color, that's why I'm assuming that. If it's not healing, then don't tell me, I'll find out. In order to save Megumi Fushiguro's life, the Shikigami must be taken down by me, an outsider. Make it appear as if the exorcism ritual never happened. That's Sukuna's motivation for taking down this creature because he's trying to stop. He doesn't want Fushiguro to die for some reason. He seems very interested in Fushiguro. So he doesn't want him to die. Okay. So they've started to fight. <laughs> to be honest, when the Mahoraga transforms like that sharp part of their hand kind of reminded me of edward from full metal alchemist <laughs> the first thing he always does in a fight dismantle and it's like a slice and then he gets some popcorn and a drink <laughs> that sword a specialized sword for cursed spirits the sword of extermination is that sharp thing a sword it's like the reverse curse technique and carries positive energy Okay, <laughs> I'll just accept it for now. I, I, I still don't fully understand, but it will make sense eventually. If I were a cursed spirit, I would have vanished with the first strike. Okay, because it's like a cursed weapon, which is like what Maki uses, right? Okay, he slices Mahoraga. Okay, so Mahoraga was, was dragging Sukuna against the glass of the building, I think. Yeah, yeah, so he's holding him in his hand and then, okay. And then he throws him, more fighting, lots of backflips. Mahuraga does that. Okay, so he's slicing up Mahuraga. <laughs> he had the finger in the hoodie. Okay, throwing the cars. At 9.24, I think that's Inumaki. Yep, all these people getting sliced too. Okay, more fight scenes. I'm just trying to take this in. Sukuna swinging from the crane. Oh, it's that was sad seeing the people cling to the building and it's just falling. Cursed energy. Wait a minute. It, okay, Mahoraga grew bigger? I think Mahoraga is definitely bigger in this scene at 1137 because they're ringing a train. I didn't notice that in my first watch through. Okay, slicing up Mahoraga again and again. Mahoraga's got rainbow colors. Mahoraga's... Okay, throwing a building at Sukuna. Sukuna's on the on the traffic light. <laughs> okay, the airplane is falling. I love the way the art style is when Mahoraga goes underwater. Looks like a painting. And Mahoraga kind of inflated. And then the water was evaporated. It saw through my slash and attacked me with cursed energy. Both happened after the magic circle rotated. Fudu's incantation and that magic circle represent a complete cycle and harmony. 
From this, I infer that the Shikigami's ability is able to adapt to any phenomena, kind of like a late throw in rock, paper, scissors. So I'm picturing like rock, paper, scissors. And if one person, I guess, delays and then they switch their decision, is that what it's like? If it were me back then, perhaps I would have already been defeated. Yeah, Fushiguro Megumi, you've fascinated me. Ryoiki Tenkai, Malevolent Shrine. Sukuna's domain, Malevolent Shrine, it's unlike other domains. It does not create a separate space with a barrier or close the barrier, but makes the innate domain visible. It's like not using a canvas, but rather painting directly in the sky. So Mahito's domain was like a circle, and then Yuji was able to break into that. But I'm guessing Sukuna's is in the real world. Kind of like, like if Trafalgar Law had a domain expansion, like his room would be a domain expansion, so it's he can manipulate stuff in the real world. I'm trying to understand it. So I'm, visual, I'm visualizing a bubble like Law's technique, a truly divine technique. Besides with binding vow on the escape route for the opponent, it increases the range of guaranteed hit to a maximum radius of 200 meters. Considering the effect would affect Megumi Fushiguro, Sukuna has reduced the range to a radius of 140 meters on the ground because he doesn't want to hurt Fushiguro. So I think everything within the bubble was destroyed. Sukuna's slash attack has two types within the guaranteed hit range. Cleave is used against those with cursed energy, while dismantle is used against those without cursed energy. So pretty much everything, right? We see the, the girl's hand disappear. And then we see the phones disappear. Cursed energy and non-cursed energy. He's getting rid of everything, I think. Before a malevolent shrine disappears, there will be an endless series of attacks. This is the only way to break Mahoraga. Okay, I'm watching at 16 minutes, 33 seconds. Yeah, I'm seeing Mahoraga have all these like damage, like chunks, and they're just regenerating because I guess they adapt. This is the only way to break Mahoraga. Use a technique to the opponent. Use a technique to the opponent and kill him before he can adapt. Cleave fits this requirement. But if he adapts to the act of slash instead of dismantle, it will be a different story. And then Sukuna's using his fire technique and all the rubble is kind of floating up. The regeneration of Mahoraga is about to end. And the rocks and metal are being melted. And we see the flame arrow again open. And then we cut to Yuji seeing the damage. And then we cut back to before. Okay, so the wheel melted. And Haruta wasn't able to escape because he ran out of the pink lines. The miracle of Shigemo sword have been run out during his battle with Kento Nanami. How does he store them? It reminds me a little bit of Basil Hawkins technique in One Piece and he always has the the voodoo dolls. And I feel like if you had a technique like that, would you constantly have a supply or at least one on standby? So I I don't know how Haruta's power works, but I wonder if he could have prevented this by making storing more. I don't know. But they said earlier that he doesn't understand his power, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to understand this, but I don't really understand Haruta's power yet. So Sukuna drops off Fushiguro to Ieri, so she's going to heal him probably. Sukuna is so mean, bringing him back just so Yuji can see the devastation. Well, I mean, he would have the memories anyway, but still. It's like, hey, here's your body back and look at this. Look. Yeah, all the destruction. I like the lines on Yuji's face. Nothing but a murderer. And then we cut to Nanami walking. Very injured. I'm glad I watched the episode twice. There was a lot of information to take in. Again, I'm not a manga reader. I'm seeing this for the first time. 
And I don't know all these characters as if I'm caught up to the manga. So when new characters are introduced, I'm just trying to get to know them. I don't understand how their powers work, but I'm trying. I'm looking forward to the next episode. Hopefully we just pick up where we left off with Nanami. And thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.